What's up guys? I'm back with a video. Today I'm really excited to talk to you guys about what I take with me when I shoot a sporting event, especially like the big one I'm about to shoot this weekend at the University of Tennessee versus Alabama. Gosh, I'm so pumped up about this. As you guys know, as a sports photographer, there's probably not any other bigger venue to shoot than college football. Now for me, I'm not an NFL guy. For those of you NFL guys, I mean, I love the NFL. There's guys that I love, like my boy Josh Dobbs with the Steelers. But I'm, I'm not really, I don't follow it as much as I do my college football. So getting to shoot a sporting event like this as a sports photographer is pretty amazing. So I thought, you know what? Some people wonder, you know, what do you take to an event like this? What do you need to shoot an SEC football game? So I'm going to kind of talk to you about that today, and uh, let's just dive right in. So let's look at my above angle view. So if you look at my above angle view, you see that I have an assortment of lenses. Okay, now I do have two telephoto lenses that I'll talk to you about and why I have these. And then I have a, a, a 24 to 70 G Master Sony lens. I have, and I will be taking three cameras with me. And let me just talk to you really quickly about why I do that. Okay, so. When you're on the sidelines, you're gonna have your long shots and you're gonna have your up close shots. And then you're gonna have opportunities to hopefully do a little bit of video if you're doing like me and you're doing a little bit of vlogging and, and creating what I hope will be a really cool episode that I can show you, share with you guys. Um, having a third camera is huge. So you kind of will look through what I've got here. You can kind of see what I've got going on. So just to kind of give you an idea, this is the Sony 100 to 400 lens. Okay, it is a telephoto lens and uh, it actually does extend out past what you see here. So I'm gonna show you. So this is a 100, 400 G Master lens from Sony. And when you crank it out really far, you can see that this sucker really gets huge. So it's, it's definitely not, for those of you that have shot um, traditional Nikon or Canon, lenses you know the telephoto lenses a 400 millimeter lens is massively heavy so you know having um having a camera like the a9 paired with the 100 400 it's definitely not as huge a footprint as far as weight for you out on the football field i can hand hold this at pretty much almost all speeds that i shoot for sports without using a monopod which is for me huge because when you're moving around the football field, the last thing in the world you want to do is to be stuck with a monopod and you can't move maneuver around. Now, obviously, if I had a huge lens that I couldn't hand hold and it was very difficult for me, I probably would use it. But really fortunate for me, as a Sony user, as a mirrorless user, the footprint for weight is not that bad. Now, this is my 70 to 200 uh, F4 lens by Sony. And this is the one I got first because they didn't have a 2.8 they do now it's about $2,500 and I'm just not ready to dive in to get that just yet because I'm able to get everything that I need out of my a9 that makes this f4 work really fast for me so obviously really dark areas in a sporting event an f4 might not be ideal but we're talking about an SEC game that's at 330 Saturday so I really don't think lights gonna be a factor and also most SEC stadiums are going to be lit up really well, and so you don't necessarily have as many issues as you would at a high school football field trying to shoot an F4. Um, so, so I've got these two telephoto lenses. This one's a 70 to 200 F4. This is the 100 400. I'm going to pair that with my A9. I'm going to pair the 70 to 200 with probably my. <laughs> it probably seems crazy. I'm probably going to start off and pair it up with my. Uh, a6000 just because it shoots really fast and I, you know I'm kind of iffy on that what I'm gonna do with that but I'm just gonna try that because it's a combo that I use quite a bit and then the 70 I mean the 24 to 70 I'm gonna put on my a7 II which is filming me right now and I'll probably jump back and forth between this one and my my uh, 10 to 18 which is actually filming on my a6000 right now and you might be saying hey well why because when you get shots in the stadium, it's a really big deal to get these wide angles, right, wide shots of the field. So not only do you want to get those up close personal shots, sports uh, action shots, but it's really cool to kind of capture the entire stadium um, when you're when you're out there. So 
With the 24 to 70, it does a great job. It's fast, it's 2.8, but you know, it doesn't get as wide as say this 10 to 18. Now I've not gotten to shoot this 10 to 18 at a college game yet, so I'm interested to see how that works. But I'll be pairing, pairing that up with the A7 II, and then, uh, you know, I'm gonna kinda jump around a little bit, things like that. But, so let me talk to you why it's important to have those three cameras. So the A6000, I'll probably shoot the, the 10 to 18 at some point as well. And I'm gonna put it on this Evo Rage gimbal. So if you guys are not familiar with what a gimbal does, most people, unless you've been hiding in a closet somewhere, this basically just gives you really steady footage, uh, video footage and things like that. And even though I'm shooting mostly photography, I do like to kind of throw in some video and things like that and I'll be doing that uh, with this video. So this is the Evo Rage okay, by Evo. You guys, I'll put them on the link so you guys can kind of check them out. They actually have a couple of different um, newer versions of this. They have the Smooth, which is one that you can actually uh, use with your, um, your iPhone, which I actually have the uh, DJI Go Osmo Mobile, which is uh, right here. I actually have it attached to my, to my, uh, my uh, C-Stand uh, to do like some live feeds from my Instagram or my Facebook. And I may actually take that as well. So let me pop that off and show you that too. Ah, so I'm back. I had to take that off. It took a second, but this is my DJI Osmo Mobile um, that I use with my cell phone, and it's something I like to do when I'm just doing quick vlogging. You know, I've gotten really good with using my hand to, to hold out in front of me, but this gives me that added footage of being able to move around and be really well balanced in video. And I'm going to show you. I actually have some little coins on mine because. Um, initially I had a, a cell phone that was really heavy it was the a6 a7 a7 it's either a6s plus I think it's what it was so that was a really heavy uh, uh, phone so when I put it in there when I put it in it was still a little off balance and so you have to get these things really balanced or it kind of works the motor a little too hard so but anyway I put these on here kind of kind of just offsets it so you know when I'm when I basically have it powered off it still stays very balanced even with it off without it working the motor too much but I'll probably put that in here too so I'm gonna have this in my this will be in my backpack along with um, my Evo uh, Rage okay and then uh, I'm gonna probably put that with the A6000 just because on a smaller rig it just really works a lot better and it's very smooth because the the lens is not very heavy I would suggest with uh, the the Rage that I have here trying to use the 24 to 70 because it's a pretty heavy lens um, matched up with like the A9 with a battery pack or anything like that. I would probably go with a low uh, angle A6000 with the 10 to, 18, 10 to 18 on there and that thing's gonna be super smooth. But let me give you a tip. If you're like me and you use the Peak Design stuff, okay, and you're doing video, okay, I would probably get myself just a little bit of some kind of tape and tape those down because they tend to when it moves around sometimes, you hear this? Yeah, so it kind of makes noise sometimes when it's moving around and you're jostling it. So it kind of, you can hear that in there. And then you can't see it right now because it's off camera, but I have my micro road mic that I'll, I'll take for me with me as well. And that'll probably be for, you know, maybe um, after the game in the media uh, area that we get to use at the football games. I can use that for any kind of interview type stuff that I want to record after the game. I'm not sure if I'll do that this year, but if I do, I'll show it to you. But that just really helps out with the with the loudness and stuff like that. So, um, so my main camera will be the the Sony A9. This is the flagship. Um, this is the flagship sports uh, camera for Sony, and uh, I've had this thing for going on a year now. And to be quite honest with you, uh, there's just not another uh, there's just not another sports camera out there that, in my opinion, can even touch this one. At 20 frames per second, uh, this thing, you know, I don't know all of the details. I know them, I've had them, but I don't really care about all that. I mean, the focus points on this thing, there's, uh, seems like there's a million. I don't, I don't miss things. Uh, my percentage of, of keepers versus before when I shot Nikon, maybe I just, you know, I shot it for a long time, but it seems like my keepers have a lot more keepers with the Sony A9, and this thing is a a low light animal. I mean, this thing really shoots great in low light. So 
The reason I'm pairing it with the 100-400, even though it's a, it's a 330 game, so it's gonna get, it's not gonna be crazy hard light, but I can actually shoot it at a higher ISO with this uh, Sony A9 and still get the high shutter speeds and things that I'm gonna need to stop the action. For those of you that shoot sports, you know, the recommended shutter speed for most of these uh, athletes is you want to keep it at a thousand and then adjust your ISO accordingly. Now I'll tell you as a Sony shooter, I don't listen to those rules. I pretty much break every rule when it comes to sports photography because the cameras and the lenses paired together with, you know, native lenses are so sharp. Yes, you'll get some fall off and some blur behind your players and things like that shooting, um, you know, when you're shooting at lower shutter speeds. But my, my subjects are super sharp and I'm able to shoot at lower shutter speeds, especially with the in-body stabilization and lens stabilization that's on this, this technology. It's just insane that the pictures you can get at such low shutter speeds and you don't get the crazy blur. You may get just a little bit of, of motion blur on the ball or the wrist or the hand when it's throwing a ball if you shoot, shoot lower shutter speeds, but it's not enough to me that changes the shot for what I do. So, you know, obviously if, you know, you don't like that little bit of blur, you're gonna have to bump up your shutter speed and then play with your ISO. I like for mine to be clean, but also not be something that I have to, you know, really bump up my ISO so much to get a lot of grain. And grain is one of those things, it's, it's very, I guess, uh, personal to the photographer or what you shoot. If if you want very, uh, if you want everything stopped on a dime and you don't care about a little bit of noise, if you have to do that, then hey, go for it. But what I found is with the Sony A9, I don't get as much noise as I did with Nikon uh, cameras. So I hope I haven't gone on too much. So I also have this Joby, uh, this Joby or Joby uh, tripod that uh, that I love, and the reason I have this is because what I plan on doing was was with the the Sony A6000 is uh, putting it out in front of me a little bit here and there during the day, and just getting some video of the stadium and get some talking points of me talking because uh, I plan on kind of capturing the day as I shoot the Tennessee game. So this is really important for that. You can latch it onto something if you're going to shoot wirelessly or anything like that. I've not really played with that too much, um, and I'm not going to do that here at the UT game, but you could uh, link this up, put this with uh, some type of uh, – you, with a trigger or something like that and you could fire it remotely like if you were you know wanting to get some run through things and you could set up a camera and it wasn't going to get knocked over and you could fire it uh you know with a pocket wizard or something like that and i do have those but i'm not going to take that to the game but that's just for video and stuff like that and then um you'll probably see this right here this is the alm9 uh this is from aperture and the reason that i have this is just because uh there could be a situation where you know, I'm at a tailgate area, maybe it's not very bright in that area and I want to do a little video or a little bit of talking point or something like that. To you guys, for my video, I can turn this on and basically get the light without having to mess with my ISO on my camera and really fill in the light. And, you know, we're going to be there uh, during the day, but as it gets darker and stuff, to give you guys some, maybe some, you know, information of what it was like shooting the game. I know when I start coming back, it's going to be dark. So I'll have this for when it gets dark and I can get some really cool shots. Um, but there's a lot of things that I plan on doing with this. But this is basically what I take. And this may to some people seem like quite a bit, but to be honest with you, with, I want to make sure that I'm ready. But if you guys have ever shot anything and, and, going back to uh, why I take three cameras because I have a different lens on all of them. So if you only had one camera, and obviously you can do that, but if I had to take this lens off, pop on another uh, lens, and then maybe take it off and go to another lens, I'm introducing a lot of opportunity to get dust in on my cameras, so on the sensors. Now, you know, I've not had a lot of trouble with uh, dust and things like that because I don't really take off my lenses in areas where it's dusty. I usually like to do that and then just go with what lens I have or have two bodies so I don't have to take it on and off. But I have had a couple shots just recently. I know I need to get in and kind of just, you know, blow out some of the dust that gets in there every once in a while when you're changing lenses or, you know, when you're changing them out. You know, you try to do it really quickly, but it introduces it sometimes. So, you know, basically... You know, this is my gear. Uh, I, I take it all in. Uh, I'll show you guys my backpack. So this is, so this is the the backpack that I that I use to take into the game. So usually I put my Sony, uh, I put my Sony A9 
in here, maybe the 70 to 200 in this little lower area. We'll see. I may just use one side for the 100, 400, and things like that. I usually tuck the little uh, Jobby tripod into this little uh, side piece here. And then also with the Evo gimbal, I have another little spot over here, or I can hang it off the back. Now, here's a little cool thing that I'll do sometimes, and I may do that for this game. Uh, this is the Peak Design Leash, which uh, if you guys don't know anything about Peak Design, I'll try to put a link if I remember to put a link to Peak Design, but they're phenomenal. And basically, the way their products work, let me kind of show you, is uh, they have these little beads that come off your camera. You can put them anywhere that you want. And basically, the way they work, you just latch them in. So if you guys can, can see the way that is, you just take your little bead, you stick it inside the, the piece, you push down a little bit and pull it, and that's locked in. So with a leash, you know, like if you've got, like my third camera, which is my Sony A6000, sometimes I put it on a little hip clip that I have that's through Peak Design. And what I'll do is, is I'll have that, you know, just kind of set to where I can basically pull it straight from my hip. There's a little click, like a little button on it that I can click it and pop it off. And there's just a little bit of a, there's a little a mounting bracket that goes on the bottom of, of the camera and you can just click it on your side and it kind of looks like you're you're packing some heat but sometimes you know I'll have my two cameras on me with with my little a6000 locked on that little um, hip clip there that I can just pop it off and just get some shots but the reason that's the uh, the leash is great is I can shorten that leash to where it's just long enough to where I can get it up to my face but not long enough to where the camera if it got knocked away that it would fall and hit the ground We're talking thousands of dollars of damage and that's just a really big deal. So the leash is something really cool. I usually have that on my third camera if it's on my hip just to keep that from falling off. Sometimes I go with a double sling harness, which I'll probably take this time, uh, just so I can have my, uh, probably the A7 II and the A9 on the sides and then just have that one little, the A6000 kind of on my hip clipped away. Uh, I also have some little uh, lens holders and stuff like that. But as you guys know, the more equipment you have on the sidelines, the more likely it is that Someone's gonna bump you running out of bounds or, or anything like that. But this is the equipment that I use when I shoot sports, whether it's high school or college. You know, I usually like to at least have two lenses. Three is amazing. Uh, two cameras, you can do it. Three's, for me, very optimal. Uh, you know, and the only problem with that is you gotta make sure all your batteries are charged up. So obviously I carry about, uh, with, the, with the Sony a7 II and the a6000, it uses the small little, um, uh, Sony batteries and I usually have about six to seven of those that I take. I've got a two pack uh, battery pack on the bottom of the a7 II that holds two batteries so it lasts a bit longer but those do tend to run through batteries a little faster the a6000 and the a7 II but with my a9 these uh, batteries I keep two in this one and uh, these right here are just amazing I think my my overhead cam uh, went out but uh, these are actually really good batteries uh, I can usually shoot almost the entire game, if not the whole game, high school, every time. Um, and I don't know about shooting video and uh, shooting video and um, stills. Sometimes that tends to drain the battery. But anyway, that's pretty much all I wanted to show you guys today. Um, you know, the 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 Sony uh, 100 400. I uh, actually rented that one from Borrow Lenses. I'll put a link to them. Uh, I was able to get a four-day rental on this uh, Sony uh, lens uh, for like $100, but because I waited so long to get it, I had to pay a little bit extra to get it shipped to me quickly to get it today. But hey, I got it on time this morning. It, they said it'd be here by 10.30 and I got it. Uh, this one is actually mine, the 70 to 200 F4. Uh, super sharp, good, amazing lens. The 24 to 70. Uh, is an amazing uh, G Master lens. This one, this one's pretty much, I could keep this on my camera and not put anything else on it for the most time for most things that I do. But uh, you know, who needs just one lens? You gotta have a lot more if you're a gear, gear guy like me. And then the other, my, my A9, the, uh, the Jobby uh, Monopod, the Evo uh, Rage Gimbal, and the DJI Osmo Mobile um, uh, Gimbal as well with my, uh, my M9 uh, LED light. If you don't have one of these things, they're only like $49 on. If you go online and go to BH um, and get these, 
These are phenomenal. They do, uh, they have a little plug and they're rechargeable and they stay charged for forever. I mean, I've not used this thing in forever and I bet it still works. Yeah, there it is, see? See how bright that is? And that's not even as bright as it goes. I mean, it's really honestly one of these things you, you don't know you need it until you have it. But uh, anyway, pretty much that's it. Um, I plan on, you know, doing another video of my actual experience at the Tennessee game and what that was like to shoot. This is not my first game shooting at the, at the University of Tennessee, but um, like I say, it's, it's, uh, it's always special when you get to shoot something as big as an SEC football game. So anyway, hope you guys get something out of this. If you're, if you're not a Sony mirrorless shooter, if you're looking to get into to, to mirrorless cameras, I will tell you that there is, in my opinion, the future is, is now with mirrorless, whether you go with Sony, Nikon, or Canon. Uh, I will tell you that Sony mirror, Sony has been in the, the mirrorless system uh, quite a bit longer, and I feel like has, has uh, I think they kind of have the game on lock right now with uh, their lenses and their bodies. They've kind of gone through the trials and tribulations of what it's like to uh, kind of build a mirrorless system. So I feel like they're kind of ahead of the game. Uh, I think Canon and Nikon are, are trying to catch up. Uh, who's, to, who's to say if they're gonna catch up or not? But I would, I would say that, uh, you know, the more competition, the better it is for us as photographers and people that love photography. So anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you got a cool idea of what I use in my bag and uh, we'll see y'all later. Peace out.